going on YouTube? Salos back with another video. Still sober today. Actually did my step one yesterday, which is pretty cool. Did this fucking big packet. Like, answer a bunch of questions. It's actually uh, more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. But it was uh, nice and healthy. I think I had to read it to the group, which was weird, just telling a bunch of people like how fucked up you were is just fucking strange man. <laughs> um kinda of fucking up already. Um so if you guys are curious what we are listening to in the background, this is Axe Grinder with Rise of the Serpent Man. One of the best albums ever created in my opinion. So today I'm going to be talking about a subject I should have talked about when I first started doing videos. A the style of music that I don't know why that many people don't listen to it, whether it's in the metal community or in the hardcore community or crust or DB, whatever you want to say. Um, there's so. There's two different genres of music that I really love. One being black metal, and the other being Japanese hardcore. Today I'm gonna be talking about Japanese hardcore. So I'm gonna be doing a three-part series. I'm gonna be covering the 80s, Japanese hardcore, and DB. This might turn into a two-part series because there's still shit I fucking wanna talk about. And then the second one, part two, is gonna be 90s DB, the more disclosed type shit and then the 2000s on to, to today so bands like clown and shit like that so i have a fucking lot of albums to talk about today i would recommend every single one of these these are all fucking great i think a lot of these albums are i would say more important than some of the metal albums that came out in the 80s at least they're more important to me. And I think just how extreme some of these bands were and how noisily produced and raw and fucking just overall just crazy, I would say, is they're doing a lot more extreme stuff than the metal scene was doing at the, around that time, at least in my opinion. And if you give this music a shot, I would say you would definitely agree. I haven't really seen too many people show off or talk about Japanese hardcore. I think Matt has and Eric has, but it's a whole video. So if you don't know Japanese hardcore or DB, definitely check some of these out. So when I first got into Japanese hardcore, it was really difficult for me to start to listen to it because I was into bands like Slayer and Sodom and shit like that. But these bands were a little too extreme for me. I even liked some black metal at the time too. Bands like Dark Throne, bands like Mayhem. But I couldn't really enjoy bands like this. So this is sort of my progression into it and early recommendations for you to check out. So if you're interested in punk music at all, but I'd say if you're a black metal fan, metal fan, you will definitely enjoy these too. Um, so let's start with some compilations. These were very important for me getting into this style of music. So, probably my personal favorite. I know I've talked about this a couple times, but this is, if I had to pick one compilation, it would be this one. For any style of music, metal or hardcore, this is my personal favorite. So this is Great Punk Hits, Rebel Street 2, we have Gizm, They Execute, A Buradaku, Lacking Nose, The Clay and Gizet, I got Lacking Nose right there too. So there was no, only a one time pressing of this, this was pressed in 1983 by Japan Records right there, and this has some killer tracks on this. Of course my personal favorite songs on this would have to be the 
gives them songs. So, the labels, just the same. And this also came with a lyric sheet. Everything's in Japanese. This is my favorite Gizm track, I would say, ever. Death, Exemplimentation, and Fire. Also has my favorite Execute song, The Boys. But this is literally a Japanese hardcore greatest hits. Every single track on this is just fucking awesome. I also dig, really dig this artwork as well. And if you look for a complete version with an OBI and the lyric sheet, you will understand my pain of how difficult it is to get your hands on. But I was lucky enough to get it for a pretty reasonable price with everything in it. And there's no bent corners. This thing is in like mint condition. There's like a little thing right there. But this album's like 30 years old. The only thing is, is because of its age, it is yellowing, but what are you going to expect? But this is just fucking awesome. If you listen to anything off of this, pop this video, definitely check this out. There'll be, in the description under this video, I will have all my favorite tracks from every release, so definitely check that out. And I can't talk about Great Punk Hits without having this. Hardcore Unlawful Assembly. I think Great Punk Hits and this compilation go hand on hand. If you really dig that the last compilation, definitely check this one out. So this one is a bootleg. Both of these, the last one, you'll, you might be able to find it complete for like 80 bucks. And then this one goes for over 100 bucks. So there's nothing really too special on this. So you have Laughing Nose, Boz, Gizm, Cobra, Udo, Mobs, Lip Cream, and of course the masterful Evil Zoe. This compilation is a lot more fun than the other one. The other one's a lot more metal. So this has all an answer with all the track names. And the labels are pretty bare bones. Just black vinyl. It says, please don't be so hard on us. Please. Of course, the artwork is pretty cool. Yeah, I definitely recommend this too. Some of my favorite Japanese bands are on this, like the Mob, Zo, Gizm, and Latinos. Lip Cream. Lots of cool shit. Next compilation for you guys. This is A Farewell to Arms. This one is also pretty difficult to get your hands on. So this side you have Lip Cream, Udo, and Gas Tongue. And this side you have Gauze, which is a classic band, Ghoul, and The Execute. This would be my favorite band, my favorite side, even though Gas Tunk is awesome too. Every song on this is fucking amazing. But this one would be my favorite side because it has gauze, and I don't have any official gauze releases, which really fucking sucks, but their stuff is just, will fucking break your bank on disc golf. You're looking at a hundred bucks, a hundred for a fucking CD, and it's just ridiculous. I will eventually get some god stuff because I need that shit. The bootlegs are pretty pricey as well. And then Ghoul, it has their song Jerusalem, which is, I would say, it's not only one of the best hardcore songs of all time, but one of the best 80s metal songs of all time. Just the guitar work and the melodies in that. The first time, the first couple times I heard it, it made the hair on my arms stand up. It's just beautiful, thrashy, just overall really fucking awesome. 
so definitely check out Ghoul. I still need to get my hands on their Jerusalem EP. They don't have that much many releases, like they don't have the full lengths. They have a couple flexies and a couple seven inches. But one of my favorite bands, just even though that they don't have that much music put out, the shit that they did put out is just fucking masterful. Same with the lyric sheet. All Japanese. Black vinyl. Yeah, this is another one of my favorite compilations ever. Definitely check out Ghoul, Jerusalem. You won't be disappointed. I will def def eventually, don't know why I'm stuttering, I will eventually get my hands on that EP once I get a job. That's probably my most wanted album, is that Ghoul EP. So the last few compilations, I showed this as well. Oh, I forgot to mention on this. So this was repressed by Nuclear Blast. The repress is a lot more cheaper than this. This is one of my gems. I can't spend some good money for this, but I feel like it's worth it. But if you can't get this one, definitely definitely get the Nuclear Blast version. That one came out in 87. So last two, we got the 80K Omnibuses 1 and 2. This is less metal, this is really snotty, I would say. More in the line of bands like Crash, Discharge. So you have Sodom, Kane, Gaddis, Gable, Molgu, Glycerin, Crime Fighter. And overall, I really want to do a 80k video just covering some of the bands on there they have bands like lsd burodaku another one of my most wanted items it's a, a burodaku seven inch the obi strip that thing goes for almost two hundred dollars it's fucking crazy but once i get that i will eventually do a label highlight a lot of these labels have been long gone for quite a lot, quite a while, but I've said it before, it's really crazy that this stuff isn't more well known. So this is a bootleg compilation, keep this bag away from babies, Japanese compilation, you got the OBI strip, um, so this has some killer bands as well. This is limited to 500 copies, hand numbered. So you have Zo, Gas Mask, Headless, and LSD. So that's a picture of uh, Zo, the band, I believe. So it just opens up like that. And I don't know if there's anything on this label. Got some tits there for you. For those of you who haven't seen some, uh, so this next band on 80k, I really wish that I had an OG first press copy of this, but that goes for about 100 bucks. Said I will eventually get official copies of these all, but I don't have any fucking jobs. And for me to spend almost $100 on a 7-inch, I wouldn't spend $100 on something that fucking sucks and something that isn't my favorite. There's few bands that I would spend that much money for, especially if there is are represses available. Like, I spend a lot of money on Japanese hardcore stuff and Celtic Frost and some other shit and all those first wave black metal stuff. 
So this one, the first one, this came out in 1984 on 80K. And this is in my top five hardcore seven inches. Just fucking really badass. I would urge to say that they started Burning Spirits Hardcore in Japan. Their second one, LSD Jazz Last. This one came out in 1986. So I'll just show you the front, back. The label on this is pretty cool. Same on the other side. Kind of looks like some kind of set thing. And then this just tells you how to identify the original pressing, which I think is pretty cool. It is obvious that this is a bootleg. But these would be my two favorite LSD releases. Now we're moving to the more evil side of Japanese hardcore. This is Zoe with Final Agony. Now if you get bands like Sodom, Early Bathory, stuff like that, Hellhammer, you'll definitely get this. This is more punk than those. Think of the more punky Hellhammer songs or the more punky Sodom tracks. Something like this. Definitely really sloppy. Adds a charm to it. And it opens up. You guys can see that. This only has four tracks. This is my favorite Zo release. We got Making Love. Making Love with a Devil. Not the Devil, a Devil. Have them with their fucking heads cut off. That's pretty cool too. Now, this came out in 1984. Say this fits in with all the early black metal stuff. This, the original version of this, goes for normally like $430. The most somebody ever spent on this was like for almost $500, like $490 something, which is abs absolutely ridiculous. And the bootleg for this isn't very good, but this was repressed by Crust Warf Warfare in 2012. Answer and the labels. This also came on red vinyl, but I have it on black. I should probably say this. Sorry about that, guys. Let's flip this record. Most of the time, I don't flip records, but this is definitely worth it. Second Zoe release I have to show you guys. This is Zoe with Frustration. So these are the two songs from Hard Hardcore Unlawful Assembly, the compilation I showed. Second vinyl I showed. Labels. Pretty simple. So this opens up like this. Both of the releases. On Crust Warfare, wish they had reissued more of these classic Japanese bands, but I'm really glad that they did these Zo albums. Actually, if you guys are bored, look up some early live photos of these guys and their singer. He has like a big mohawk, 
and he looks like he's wearing corpse paint. I would put him up there as one of the earliest people wearing corpse paint next to bands like Sarcophago and shit. But it's just crazy to me. Oh, there's a photo kind of right here. What about that? There's a, real, a lot better picture. And he has it all the way down here. It actually looks really badass. Eventually, once I get some money, I will get a poster of him and Corpse Paint and Zoe. Fucking classic band. Next one, this is a more traditional heavy metal band. I have two pressings of this. I have talked about this, this before. These are really inexpensive. If you're a fan of British heavy metal and shit, so I wouldn't exactly consider this. This specific album is a Japanese hardcore or D-beat album. It's more in the new wave of British heavy metal realm. But this is classic nonetheless. So I'm gonna show this pressing first. This is the original pressing. This came out in 1987. Their earlier works are more raw. This is a weird album cover, it's like jazzy and shit. Yeah, it looks like a weird jazz album. I definitely prefer the Pusset version. And this has English lyrics and shit. So the other one is in Japanese, sung in Japanese. This one has Japanese parts, if I remember right. And it also has English. So maybe my favorite piece of Pusshead artwork is this right here. This came with a big poster of it. So I'm going to be reviewing these old Japanese albums just because I feel like it deserves all the credit it can get. And people should honestly just really check this shit out. I know I say it, keep saying that, but it, one of the things that bums me out in life is everybody worships these old, obscure, first wave black metal bands, even like fourth tier Norwegian black metal bands. But nobody knows about this shit. So this is like a sticker and another thing. This came with a flexi as well, with wild time. I keep this little Japanese sleeve. Clear here. just on black vinyl. So this was repressed by Pussport, Pusshead's label, and Vice America. Can't forget the order form. More Pusshead artwork. Really fucking sick. Now this is another gem in my collection. I can get this out. Keep a piece of hard cardboard in there so it doesn't get too fucked up. Because I got this in really good condition, too. This is Mahab's projection of Astral Body. This is the original pressing from 1987, I believe. Just get some of these records out of the way. band. Now, I haven't really talked about the classic Japanese solos yet, and I really got too much shit pulled out. So the labels, 
kind of looks like a black metal album cover. But this has some of my favorite Japanese hardcore solos. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, just check this out and you will understand. This is another album that even today some I get goosebumps from, just specific parts of songs. And it's really hard for me to get goosebumps from music, especially music I've listened to for a long time. Maybe not as long as some of you, but you guys get the point. But this is just really fucking awesome. Been, this might be my favorite seven inch that I own. Thank good many for this. Um, yeah, you're looking at, I got it for cheaper than it goes for, but you're looking at $50 plus for this thing. There is a repress that is cheaper, but I needed this version. Next one, <laughs> and this band is, I'm wearing the shirt, one of my top 10 bands of all fucking time, man. This is Gizm. With Detestation. Now, I don't understand why this band's not as popular as it should be. Now, this specific album, I think that this fits up there in extremity, vocals wise, music wise, up there with Hellhammer, with Possessed, and Sodom. You can't forget about fucking Slayer and Sarcophago and fucking Celtic Frost. This album is up there. Not only do I consider this a crust album or a DB album, but there is fucking so much more to this shit. And this artwork is badass as well. This just has a really fuzzy, distorted, noisy sound. This is a band that is really fucking difficult to to explain. You think not only this album, but all of their releases, but this would be my personal favorite. Think of the most distorted parts of Discharge and times that by 10, the sloppiness of Sodom, the evilness of Hellhammer, and the melody of fucking, like a band like the Iron Maiden for the solo of Judas Priest. And, and they just mix it all, all too well together. There's never been a band like Gizm before, and there never will be. There is no Gizm worshiping. As much as I wish there was, there is none. It is, I would say, it is impossible. And for the year that this came out, it is, there was nothing like this at the time. This is the back cover. Like, this came out in 1983. There was no factory. There was no fucking Sodom. Maybe Hellhammer demos, but these guys weren't. They might have been listening to Hellhammer, but I I don't believe that Sodom or Hellhammer's demos made it all the way to Japan, like in the same year for them to release this. So I really don't know what would cause these guys to be so fucking extreme. Said this came out in 1983 by Dogma and City Rocker. Now, this thing goes for fucking good money. This is a bootleg. A really good bootleg, I have to say. But a bootleg, all in all. But once I have the money, like once I get my tax return and I can buy anything I want, really, like any album I want, like I really want. Burzum first press or a Mayhem first press. But I would have to go with the Gizm first press. And it's the only press. The CDs go for like a hundred bucks. Which is just so sad that I don't own an official version of this. Especially because this is one of my favorite fucking bands. This is their second album. This is less 
crazed, like less fucking gnarly and crazy and distorted, but this is awesome. Either way, this is Gizm with man, which means stands for military affairs neuroticism or something. Oh, military affairs neurotic. Now this is a good mixture of good old DB New Age British heavy metal, even a little bit of fucking glam. In there. Now this is a not a completely different album, but in its own right, these are two very separate releases. You might have a hard time, even if you're a black metal fan, getting into these test station. I would definitely tell you check this out first, but if you can't get into that, check this thing out. This also goes for really good money. The labels on this. You got a vagina, you got a tank and a ball sack, and a penis. And you got a little butthole there too. Butthole on both sides. Definitely the weirdest band that I own. Two classics. This is their third release. This came out in 2001. And I haven't mentioned the singer to this band, the vocalist. If you think Gigi Allen is nuts, he, um, I love Gigi Allen. And Gigi Allen was completely just fucking crazy dude. But the singer for this, this band, completely nuts as well. And Richie Uchida on guitars. If you haven't listened to the Richie Uchida solo group, his solo band, that 7-inch, holy fuck. If you talk about cheese, like power metal cheese, but mix it in with the fucking sound of Gizm, it just makes it completely awesome. So insert, kind of running out of time time. Now, even though they came back and released this, this is just as weird as the other two. They have like a slow jazz, fucking clean singing song, like a late night jazz song. But all these are fucked up. All these releases are awesome. Definitely check out the other two. And if you become a fan of Gizm, you can't leave out this release. Sonic Crime Therapy, 2001. Now, most accessible release would be uh, Gizm, Anarchy and Violence. This has their detestation and military's military. Yeah, just their man, their second album. Both on here and then rare tracks from compilations as well. So this is a good compilation of everything that they have done. double LP. So a lot of the rare stuff from Gizm that I don't have is all on here, so I'm pretty happy with it. Opens up like that. So, just a killer band, all in all. Like I said, they're up there with all those classic bands for me. And I would say that it's hard to say for at the time that anything could be more extreme than bands like Bathory and Hellhammer, Celtic Frost, Chicago, but I would say that is the top of the pinnacle when it comes to 80s DB metal crazed fucking extreme music. One more Gizm thing to show. Don't think I've showed this before either. This is a split with live, live tracks. They got Gizm. Another Japanese band is sick. Gives them sign. This is on a pink vinyl. Opens up. Yes. If you're, if you're a Gizm fanboy like I am, this is definitely cool to own, but it's not essential as all of these other ones are. Definitely cool to have. Now some bands that aren't as popular as the other ones, which really none of these are really that popular. 
This is Kuro? Kuro? Not sure. This is a limited edition release. All the works from 1983 to 1985. This is definitely more punk than a lot of the releases I show. There's not really that much metal on here. But if you're a fan of Jackson Hardcore already, you will dig this. So the labels are the same as Black Texas. Drips. Has that LSD. It's on red vinyl. Fuck, I need a new sleeve, man. That blows. Insert. Yeah, if you're a fan of Jeffy's Hardcore, check that out. Been really looking into them lately. This is the Death Side. More Jeffy's Hardcore stuff, of course. Death Side with Wakes to Dream. Forget what year this came out. No, I do have the first press of this album. To the Dick Dad cover. You guys wearing a disorder shirt right there. I just came out on Selfish Records. So I've been really getting burned out on a lot of like 80s metal stuff. 80s thrash and stuff. Of course, I'm always gonna love it, but I'm. There's a lot of. I don't listen to the more popular bands, but this really scratches that itch for me, like the thrash uh, crossover itch. So if you're into bands like BRI, shit like that, check this out. This was repressed in 2015, I believe, and you can get that release for like 20 something dollars. First press goes for. I think on average like 130 bucks so if you're not a big Japanese hardcore fan don't spend hundred and thirty dollars like I did check that out last two couple releases this is lip cream now this was on some of the previous compilations that I've showed this is kill all ugly pop now this is a compilation of majority of the tracks. I'm not sure if this is um, a discography or not. So LP1 has their Kill Pop LP, which is this, and LP2 has tracks 1 through 4, Lonely Rock from 1984, tracks 5 through 9, Death Rider, tracks 10 through 11, Hardcore Unlawful Assembly, the compilation I showed. Tracks 12 through 18, Kill the IBM. Tracks 19 through 20, The Punk Tape. 1985, Tracks 1 through 23, Farewell to Farewell. Farewell to Arms, the other compilation I showed. Tracks 24 through 28, Thrash Till Death. And Thrash Till Death is one of the only compilations that I don't have that I love. There's a few compilations that I need to get my hands on. And that's one of them. Now, this is... No, I don't think on a colored vinyl. This is just on black labels. Which is pretty simple. Just so the album artwork. Definitely in the more punk realm, like I said too. There's some metallic elements, but nothing as crazy as like Zo or Gizm. Last two. Last couple. So we got a ghoul with oi oi. I talked about how much I loved their Jerusalem LP. I mean EP. Their flexi. And this is just a single with one song. Definitely not my favorite ghoul song, but this is really cool to have. Not as expensive as their other stuff. So definitely cool to have. And then these next releases kind of lead me into my next video, which is going to be on 90s Japanese crust and the 
distorted raw the shit that makes uh, raw black metal look overproduced so this is confused with nuclear addicts and when I first listened to this I couldn't get into this and especially when I found out it came out in 1984 but this has really grown on me very minimalistic I would this is like the raw black metal of the punk world if you're into hardcore raw black metal anything like that stream raw music in general and you don't mind it sloppy definitely check this out really love all these photos on the back <laughs> it's kind of funny that m my dad has an old school vest that looks just like these guys does with all the studs and shit got a big gizm patch that I would die to have came out on Violent Party and Blue Jug Records I definitely need an original of these. I am willing to pay the $50 if somebody has an original one once I get John. Another one of my most wanted albums would be this. But this has been a big influence on any raw punk bands. Bands like Paranoid, bands from Scandinavia, current bands from Japan. If you listen to any raw punk bands, the noisy shit like I said. They were definitely influenced by this band. Another confused 7 inch, just as maybe less distorted, but great either way. Not as good as that nuclear addicts. This is a spending out the night. This came out in 1987. I definitely need everything by confuse. The cover's not as kind of, it's not as cool. So the labels. Last one I have to show, Swing Seas and Guy. You know, Guy was influenced by bands like Confuse and Discharge. And they were originally called the Swing Swankies which is a more traditional snotty sex pistol the Stalin influence band but they had to change their names because their shells were too violent so they started the band Guy which is only around for a few years they have two demos you can get on 12 inch LPs but those are pretty expensive really fucking cool represses though and then Guy Extermination which is the most classic the most well known, a lot of people's favorite EP, EP, or favorite release by this band. This is a double, double. So you have like Swank Seas Guy, Swank Seas Guy. Labels are pretty basic. But the same thing with the Confuse. If you're into raw, raw punk shit, grindcore, anything like that, like really raw distorted grindcore shit definitely check out guy one of the one of my favorite bands from japan overall so that's everything i have to show for you guys today pretty fucking long video uh, i hope you guys check out some of the stuff that i decided to show you today uh, the next two videos aren't going to be as long i should have broke the 80s up into three parts but i thought might as well get it all done here. So, thank you guys for watching. Um, yeah. Fucking peace out, dude. Subscribe, dislike, whatever. Peace.